get started on dyeing anything, you have to be able to identify the fabric because different fabrics require different types of dyes. So the first thing before jumping into becoming a textile designer is you have to be a fabric detective. How does one become a fabric detective? Well, you have to collect all your fabrics and if you can't identify them by touch, you're gonna have to do a burn test. And it gets kind of exciting, so buckle in. My name is Aviva. I'm a textile designer. I've been practicing textiles uh, for longer than I'd like to admit. And um, it's been a meditation for me. There's no finish line. I enjoy it very much. And I'm warning you guys also that it can become very addictive. So consider yourselves warned. Let's get started. The first thing you have to do is make sure that you are armed with all the safety precautions to do your burn tests. Um, I have my safety goggles and my safety goggles. I have, just in case there's a burst, I have an earplug, which we won't need. I have my safety vest to make sure that anybody that's um, hanging out with me knows that I'm doing something slightly precarious. I have my fire extinguisher, just in case, because I do tornado around sometimes. Um, scissors, matches, and um, that's all you really need. Let's get started. First of all, um, may I share with you that fabrics come in three different categories. Um, it's essentially the way they're made. The fabrics come in three different categories. If it's made out of something that is born out of the ground, like a plant, then that is a cellulose-based textile. That means it's a plant type of thing. So that would be like hemp or linen or cotton or things of that nature. <laughs> get it in nature. <laughs> so then, sorry, but then you also have animal protein fabrics. Those would be your silks, which comes from a silk cocoon, that's a silk worm, or wool, or cashmere, or um, things that would come from an animal. So if an uh, alpaca, for example, um, things like that. Then you have synthetic materials, and those are man-made materials. That would be your polyesters, your nylons, and things that I think of as um, not from this planet, but man has made them and manipulated um, chemicals and things to do that. So let's get started. Let's start with this one. Ooh, something is happening. Make sure you have a little pot of water close by. That's prudent. Watch what happens. Let's pay attention to the way the plume is and the way the flame is interacting with the fabric. I can see a bit of white smoke. I can see the ember. And I can smell a little bit of a sensation of wood or paper burning. It's still burning. And that ember, she's still going kind of hot. And um, if it smells like wood or a sense of um, forest, like a campfire, then you know that that's a natural fiber. Look, she's still smoking. So if she keeps smoking like that and it smells like something pleasant, like paper or wood burning, like you're about to roast marshmallows, then you have a natural fiber there. Okay, let me put that out. Oh, and also, ooh, the ash will be soft and be very pleasant in a way like a face mask. Okay, so let's put that. Let's try the next one. This one has a bit of a sheen to it. It's got a bit of fluidity to it. Oh, I see the smoke. It's burning quite fast. I put the flame out because it was burning a little too fast. Oof, it smells like hair burning. I know that that's silk. And I had to put the flame out. It was burning very fast. The ash crumbles in my hand and um, it crumbles to a powder. So you can see that. Um, but the main thing was that acrid smell of when you burn hair. And so you know that that's animal-based and protein-based fiber. So, whew, we need um, some lavender here. Okay, let's continue. 
This one also has a bit of shine to it. Let's figure out what this is. Oh, it's curling. It's rolling. And it's curling and rolling. And the smoke is black and it's burning quite fast. Oh! And I had to blow that out. It's curled in a way which looks shiny and drippy. I know that this is synthetic because it's plastic and it's like when a plastic bag melts. And it's crunchy in an unpleasant way. So that's synthetic. Oh, and it's like now become like a melted blob. So, and look, the flame dripped through there. Um, so you can, you can tell right away that this is a synthetic. It's a bit um, of an unpleasant scent. And it smells like, um, like a harsh plastic, like a melty plastic. And it's crispy. That's the main thing. So you know this is completely synthetic. Okay. Let's go to the next one. This is also a little bit shiny. It's got a little bit of a slub in it. Okay, it's running down the thread. It's burning very fast and burning away very fast. The smoke is dark and it's also got a scent of something negative. So this is also synthetic. You have to be very careful. It's not good to breathe this synthetic material. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated place when you're doing your burn tests. This is also dripping and plasticky. So you know that this is also a synthetic material. Thank you for joining us on our burn test adventure. You've set up your design studio. Now we did the burn test. It's really important to make sure you do your burn test to identify your fabric in some format because if you don't know what type of fabric you have, you don't know which recipes to use. I want you to be set up for success in your textile design journey. Um, there's sparkletunities around every corner and it's going to be so fun to be able to achieve bright colors and gorgeousness along your journey. Um, please subscribe to our channel. Please check out our next segment and I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.